Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, I know you guys are a little confused right now because uh, I did this last week, but I wanted to redo the video. I felt like it was definitely too long and it was a little everywhere. Um, I want to condense the information a lot more so uh, it's a lot easier to follow and kind of understand what someone would need to do to start their own colony. Uh, I felt like I kind of jumped around too much last time. So we're going to redo that video and uh, hopefully it'll be a little bit more easy to follow and uh, understand. So let's get to it. To get started, you're going to want to roughly get a 2 to 1 ratio of female to male adult dubia roaches. You will know it's a female by them having very short and stubby wings like seen here while their male counterpart, which you can see right here, have larger wings. Uh, they are not able to fly with them, but they can fall more gracefully and land a little bit better. Now for your basic setup, uh, you could just get a storage bin, basically at Walmart or Target, and that will work fine. And then you're just going to want a bunch of these egg crates, and those are just so they don't trample each other and have more places to hide. As for the lid, I just take the lid of the storage bin and I cut out a rough rectangle and then I put some window mesh in or some cage mesh and then just tape it and pin it up with some tacks. Uh, you can see the tacks here. Um, I put about six on, but you could probably put a little bit more. Um, I'm sure there's many ways you can uh, safely put some, some barrier up, but this is how I did it. <laughs> As for water, I used to use the miracle Grow water crystals, but I switched over to just hydrating them through their food and spraying down their enclosure. Now even if you use the miracle Grow water crystals or water crystals in general, you'll probably still want to spray down their enclosure at least once a day. They do require humidity, so it is good to spray it down, but if you're just using it for pure hydration and not using water crystals, I recommend spraying it down a couple times a day. This will help give them water as well as wetting their food. Before putting food in their enclosure, I like to wipe down the area. Yes, the food will be wet, but I like to keep it dry as possible so mold doesn't grow. As for the food you should be feeding them, you're going to want to give them gut loading items. This includes bananas, oranges, butternut squash, apples, and more. This is just going to fill them up with the nutrition they need to pass on to your reptile. As for me, I also like to mix in some Pangea gecko diet. I have a gecko so I have this anyway, but they really love it. There's a lot of nutrition packed into it and you just have to mix it with water. It's a great way to hydrate them as well and I just spread it on top of these gut loading items like so. To regulate their heat, I use this digital control thermostat to make sure their temperature stays at optimal levels. If it goes too high, a probe will pick up the temperature and shut off your heat source, and if it goes too low, it'll kick the heat back on. Now, if you get something that you can trust, you might not need this. I have two ceramic heat emitters. One is 75 watt, the other is 100 watt. The 75 watt gives a perfect temperature, while the 100 watt needs to be monitored via this probe. The optimal breeding temperatures are anywhere from 85 to 92 degrees, but I like to try to get anywhere from 90 to 92 so they can choose if they want to stay towards the heat source or go away from it, thus establishing a gradient. Just to show how this works, you can see that the heat light is on, meaning it's heating. I have it set to 90, which you can see when I press set. And this is my other enclosure with the 75 watt ceramic heat emitter. You can see it's roughly at 92 degrees. Um, and it works perfectly for my enclosure, but it probably depends on the temperature in the room and other factors. As for some alternative methods, uh, the enclosure could be designed a little bit differently or have some more egg crates, but it's pretty much standard. Uh, it could have some food and water bowls in there if you're doing, let's say, uh, water crystals and maybe some standard, uh, you know, regular diet, like a cricket diet, like flukers. Um, so you could have those in there, but mine's pretty much standard, something you'll always see. Um, as for food, uh, you could have something like flukers in there all the time, something as a staple, and then sort of supplement with the gut loading items like your bananas and oranges. Uh, but that is something you could look at your own. 
Um, I would just be aware of using the high calcium flukers diet because that's something you more want to give a few days before you give to your reptiles, not something you want to offer every day. Uh, and again, for water, you could offer water crystals, but that's completely up to you. Uh, for heating, a lot of people use heating mats and stick it on the side near the bottom or on the bottom. Just make sure you're not putting it on carpet if the heating pad is in uh, is touching the carpet. Uh, you don't, you know, obviously want to set your reptile room on fire, especially if it's a bunch of wooden enclosures like mine. So you probably want them on some sort of, um, you know, table or something that's not going to catch on fire. That's definitely a good method. It's going to cost you still the same amount as some heat emitters would, but it probably is a little bit better because it comes from the bottom and usually the roaches like to hide on the bottom because it's dark and they don't have to be exposed. So that is something uh, probably worth doing if you're not putting your uh, bins on some carpet. Other than that, some tips and tricks. Um, if you see your male roach's wings kind of getting gnawed up, that probably means that you have too many males in your enclosure. Uh, when there's too many males and not enough females, they'll start to fight. It could also mean a sign of uh, not enough food. Uh, that might cause some fighting. Another sign of not enough food is if you see some of the nymphs, which are the babies, um, go missing. Uh, that means they're probably getting eaten because there's not enough food and, uh, you know, your roaches are hungry. So those are some tips I would keep in mind, some things to remember. Also, real quick, I dropped a lot of information below in the description. Uh, take a look. There's some information on different ways to give water to your roaches, on um, the benefits of giving roaches over crickets to your reptiles, uh, more on the nutrition of roaches, some gut loading tips, and a bunch more. So I look down below, check it all out if you want some more information. Anyway guys, I guess the one good thing about recording at 2 a.m. is that I get to see this guy over here. Um, don't usually get to see him during the day. So uh, we'll go ahead and wrap up this video. And I hope this was a good guide. I hope it was condensed. And I hope you some took something out of it. Feel free to drop any criticisms or comments. Leave a like, subscribe. Thanks for watching.